From Grandma Studios inside of MVG, it's everybody's game of strategy, knowledge, and fun. It's Turd's Tic Tac Toe. Please welcome our host tonight. It's Turd Ferguson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claire. Good to have you back, Claire, in your position, Travis Coulter. This is episode 25, the season finale of Turd's Tic Tac Doe. We have had a lot of ups and a lot of downs in this season. We have seen lots of people come through here, but believe it or not, in this moment, we have only had five people to win a championship so far during this season. And our current champion has won 22 games in a row. Yes, you heard that right. Two followed by another two. So, without further ado, as he looks to go for number 23, Travis, will you please introduce us to our champion and his first challenger? All right, our champion comes to us from New Orleans, Louisiana. He's a meat cutter. Please welcome Jason Myers. Our challenger, we have a convenience store worker from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Please welcome Scott Michaels. All right, back here again is our champion. As we said just a moment ago, he has won himself 22 games so far, and he has a season total of 1796475 dollars he is the new orleans crusher himself jason myers jason welcome back to turds tic tac doe how you doing uh, okay question mark and what's the question mark for there crusher <laughs> I, I i i just don't know how to feel right now <laughs> Well, the last time that we spoke, uh, when we were going out of episode 24, you said you were hungry. So uh, I'm hoping coming into this episode, you're not hungry. You are full of food and knowledge. Knowledge, sure. Food. uh, I ate a little bit before walking onto the set, so we'll see how long that lasts. Well, I take it the catering is a, a little slim back there. That would partly be your fault. Uh, due to the fact that you have taken the money look, from us. Look, and- I tried suggesting to them to go to Raising Canes, but they don't want us. <laughs> well, at this point, the only cane that we're raising is the one that's in box seven. So, right. <laughs> well, Jason, go ahead and remind the folks out there for the last time in this regular season a little about yourself. Uh, just outside of New Orleans, Louisiana, I'm a meat cutter, I enjoy video games, I enjoy watching game shows, I'm an Oregon off a voice actor, I'm a one-legged man born on the right side of a cow, I like being checked in with luggage at airports, and I think I covered all the bases, sure. <laughs> and your best friend is Nelson Nesrud, right? You forgot that one. I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> and we had to throw a little something extra in there, so... Well, Jason, as always, it is good to have you here. You know that here in this first game, you are looking for your 23rd win, and number 23 would match the number of the, the if not one of, if not the greatest basketball player to ever live, being Michael Jordan. So how does it feel knowing that you could be in the same conversation with his airness? Well, believe it or not, 23 is actually the day I was born in April, so it'd be even more fitting. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So, let's see what can happen here. But to get to that win number 23, you have got to beat this man coming back here to us for his second appearance ever, and it's his second time up against you. We've not seen him here in quite a few episodes. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the flat broke kid himself, Scott Michael. Scott, how are you doing? <laughs> It's still flat and still broke. (laughs) Well, fair enough. So I guess we could call you Flat Stanley and mail you around the country and around the world to see all the little kids and have them take pictures with you. Hey, at least I'd be famous and making money then. This is true. So um, I know that you're still fairly new here uh, to everybody at MVG and Grandma Studios, but I also know that you have recently started a new 
project here that you were looking to bring to series here at MVG Productions. Uh, why don't you tell everybody out there a little bit about it? Uh, yeah, I've been working on writing questions for it and figuring out the rules for it. But coming up soon here, I'm going to try to get a series going of All-Star Blitz. Ah, uh, yes. The, uh, I believe that was late 80s. Um, mid to late 80s series by Peter Marshall, uh, the uh, king of the Hollywood squares. Um, I know that I've been lucky enough to be one of your panelists so far, and and it's actually been quite a bit of fun. How much fun are you having with it? Hosting? It can, it can be a hassle for a show like that, especially with you as a panelist. Oh, boy. Well, I'm telling you, it is absolutely a stress relief after everything Jason has put me through here. It is uh, definitely a a nice change of pace just to be able to go out and have fun instead of watching all of your life savings dwindle away. But, uh, don't worry. Justin's doing that over there for me right now. So Well, there you go. I, I totally understand how that feels. So before we get into our game, go ahead and remind everybody out there in television world a little something about yourself. Uh, hi, I'm Scott Michaels. I hail from the state of cheese. And if you want to get on my good side, buy me Dr. Pepper. Oh, okay. I thought you was going to say buy you some cheese. So, but let me tell you, I, one of my favorite little snacks to have is a nice fried cheese curd. Oh, man. Yes. I'll be your best yes. friend on that one all day long. I will follow you anywhere that you try to take me if you give me a, a bowl full of cheese curds. So, I, I, I will chase it if you dangle it on a string in front of me. Absolutely. Just like Jason on Press Your Luck when he's like, I got you a dollar. <laughs> So, yes, that is. That I'm is. Bring my dollar into this. <laughs> Those cheese curds are my kryptonite. So, well, Scott, it's good to have you back here again. I know the last time that you faced Jason, you gave him a good fight as well. You were able to get two boxes, which means you were right there in it till the very end. So, let's see if you can do that again today. Wish you the best of luck. And as we get started, being the challenger, you will get to select the two bonus categories. So, if you would please give me two numbers between one and fifteen. Uh, let's go for 8 and 10. 8 and 10. All right, and with that being said, let's do this thing. All right, as you know, you're going to try to get three X's in rows and O's in a row. Try to say that three times real fast. I'm sure if it was Scruggs, he'd get it right. So three X's and O's in a row, either vertically, horizontally, or diagonally. We're going to do so by answering trivia questions, and they'll be in these categories for our first game today, and they are... TV sitcoms, Auction, People, The 1990s, Heroes and Villains, The Wild West, Elvis, The Challenge Category, and South America. Those two flashing categories, those red ones, those are the ones that Scott just chose, and we'll talk to you a little bit more about those if they get chosen during our game today. All right, so Jason Myers, as the defending champion, you get to make the first selection. Let's go to battle. Let's start with South America. All right, South America down in the lower right-hand corner. What crazed man, leader of the People's Temple, was part of a mass suicide of over 900 people in Jonestown, Guyana, in 1979? Would that be Pablo Escobar? No, I'm sorry. The, the, part of the name was there in the question. It was Jim Jones. Jim oh. Jones, the man they talked about that was making people drink the Kool-Aid. All right. <laughs> Nothing doing there. An odd start to this game we shuffle. All right, Scott. He does not do this very often, so you have a chance to uh, to get on top. Uh, let's go heroes and villains. All right, heroes and villains in the middle left-hand side. All right, and here comes your question. Scott, who was the dictator and third president of Uganda from 1971 to 1979 who once crowned himself King of Scotland. I'm just going to pass. All right, no I guess there? No idea. Yeah, no that would idea. be Idi Amin. Idi Amin. All right, nothing doing there. Our board is blank. Let's shuffle. All right, Jason, he wasn't able to take advantage. Let's see what you can do here. Uh, TV sitcoms. TV sitcoms in the lower middle. All right, so Jason, I'm going to give you three characters from a television sitcom, and you're going to tell me the name of that sitcom. Mm -hmm. All right, and your three characters, Richie Cunningham, Potsy Weber, and the Fonz. Happy Days. 
And it is a happy day for you. You got it. Two hundred fifty dollars for the pot, as we know. Those outside boxes worth two fifty. Same is worth five hundred. And we shuffle. All right, now Scott. Now he's got a box. Get to work. Let's go to the nineties. All right, the nineties up in the upper right hand side. Who retired from his position as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in nineteen ninety three? It was definitely Al Gore. It definitely was not. I'm sorry. It was. <laughs> A very great man who we lost not too awful long back. That would be Colin Powell. Colin Powell. Oh. Okay. Yes, no matter which side of the aisle you fell on, that was definitely someone that was very highly respected in government. $250 is what we've got in the pot, and we shuffle. All right, Jason, Scott's not been able to take any type of advantage yet. This is your chance to get a big lead. <laughs> Time to make the girls in the audience swoon, Elvis. All right. Oh, uh-huh. thank you very much, Larry Jackson. All right. I'm sorry. I won't do that again. All right. Elvis in the center box, of course. As you know, Jason, Elvis being in the center, this is worth $500 added to the pot because it's a two-part question. Since it's two-part and it's a little bit tougher, we'll give you a little extra time to think about it. All right. Here are your two questions. Question one. Which member of the Beatles said, I basically became a musician because of Elvis Presley. Your second question is, I'm going to give you these lyrics and you tell me what song it goes with. Fire, fire, I feel my temperature rising. Burning, burning, it feels like I'm 110. All right, so you've got those two questions. Here comes your time to think about it. All right, Jason, so the first question we asked you there was, which member of the Beatles said, I basically became a musician because of Elvis Presley? Can I answer the second question first? Absolutely. So the second question was, name the song with the lyrics, fire, fire, I feel my temperature rising, burning, burning, it feels like I'm 110. I'm just a hunk of hunk of burning love. Burning love is correct. And for that center box and $500 to the pot, which member of the Beatles said, I basically became a musician because of Elvis Presley? Was it George Harrison? I'm sorry. It was John Lennon. Oh. John Lennon. Uh, nothing doing there. So we've still got 250 <laughs> in the pot and we shuffle. All right, Scott. He does not seem to be on his mm-hmm. best game today. you got to get something going here. These are tough categories, that's for sure. Um, where do I go? Let's try the 90s again. All right, back to the 90s again, the upper right-hand corner. What $1.6 billion object was launched in 1990 by the space shuttle Discovery? Wasn't it the Land Rover for Mars? No, I'm sorry. It was the Hubble Space Telescope. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Still up there, believe it or not, working to this day, although the James Webb um, Telescope is now up there as well, which is supposed to be much, much more powerful. All right. So, guys, right now we've got $250 in the pot. There's only one X up there, and that's it. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and hopefully you guys will recompose yourself. We'll be right back here on Turd's Tic Tac Toe. Back here on Turd's Tic Tac Toe. A little slow start to this game here. We've only got $250 in the pot. Jason with 1X. Scott's having a tough time getting his footing here. Jason, you are up, and here comes a shuffle. All right, where do you go? (sighs) Great. Um, Let's go to South America again. All right, back to South America there in the center box. Again, going to be a two-part question on this one. Question one is, what is the main language spoken in Brazil? Question two is, what is the second largest country in South America? So with your two questions there, here comes your extra time to think about it. (laughs) 
All right, Jason. So would you like to answer question one or two first? Uh, first question. All right. So the first question I asked you is, what is the main language spoken in Brazil? Portuguese. Portuguese is correct. And for the center box and $500 added to the pot, what is the second largest country in South America? Argentina. Don't cry for him, Argentina, because he's got it. $750 is in the pot now and a big lead, and you shuffle. All right, Scott, take heed of this and get yourself on a roll. People for the block. All right, people for the vertical block here of Jason. Definitely got to get this to give yourself the best opportunity to stay alive. Ah, 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 staying alive. <laughs> Staying alive. Yes. Great. Now I'm going to have to pay royalties to the Bee Gees for that. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here comes your question. I want you to name the group that includes these people. Bashful, Grumpy, Dopey, Sleepy, Sneezy, Happy, and Doc. So for the vertical block of Jason, who's that group? They're the Seven Dwarves in Snow White. They are the Seven Dwarves. You got it. $1,000 in the pot. Scott is alive after all, and we shuffle. All right, Jason, the board is yours. <sighs> uh, let's go TV sitcoms. Okay, interesting choice there. TV sitcoms in the upper right-hand corner. <clears throat> so again, I'm going to give you three characters from a popular television sitcom, and you tell me what show they are from. All right, your three characters, Grace Adler, Karen Walker, and Jack McFarland. Oh, is it Will and Grace? You sound unsure of yourself, but you shouldn't be. You got it. Will and Grace. $1,250 is in the pot. We shuffle. All right, Scott. Where to? South America. South America in the lower left-hand corner. You need to get this one correct in South America to have that diagonal block of Jason. You did it once. Let's see if you can do it again. All right, Scott. <clears throat> what Indian civilization controlled most of Mexico, were known for their human sacrifices to their gods, and was conquered for Spain by Hernan Cortez? So for the diagonal block of Jason, name this Indian civilization. Why am I not thinking of it? I, I'm just going to say the Aztecs. You should be glad you did because you got it. Whoa. The diagonal block goes there to Scott. We have got $1,500 in the pot and we shuffle. That's right. All right, Jason, back over to you. He's giving you a fight. Uh, let's go with the 1990s. All right, 1990s in the lower right-hand corner. What is the name of the toy that became a fad when people tried to feed it and protect its fuzzy head in 1998? Furby. Furby is the correct answer. Well done. Somebody knows their toys. 1750 in the pot. We shuffle. There's the 90s questions I was waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Scott, he has you in a little bit of a predicament. How do you get out of it? The challenge category. All right, challenge category, upper left-hand side. So here's how we do the challenge category. So <clears throat> I'm going to ask you a question, Scott, and you will then have the option to either answer the question yourself or if you don't think Jason knows it, then you can pass it over to him and force him to answer. If he gets it wrong, the box is yours. But if he gets it right, then he will actually have a diagonal tic-tac-toe and he will have, let's see, just making sure, yep, he will have $2,000 added to his winnings, bringing him up to $1,798,475 and his 23rd win. All right, here comes your question. <clears throat> Scott, Robert De Niro received his first Emmy nomination for playing which financial crook? So would you like to answer this question or would you like to challenge Jason? Well, 
it doesn't give him the win. I'll ch I'll answer it myself. All right. So for the diagonal block of Jason, name the crook. Don't know why. The only thing coming to my mind is the Godfather. No, I'm sorry. It was Bernie Madoff. Bernie Madoff. Again, okay. might, might be a little young on that one, but either way, we've got 1750 in the pot. This game is not over till it's over and we shuffle. All right, Jason, we're back over to you. Oh boy. TV sitcoms. All right, TV sitcoms in the lower center, or excuse me, in the middle right hand side. Jason, get this question correct. You will have a vertical tic tac toe, two thousand dollars, and your twenty third consecutive win. Let's get you a question in TV sitcoms. Again, I will give you three characters. You tell me what sitcom did they come from? Mindy McConnell, Fred McConnell, and Exodor. So for a Tic Tac Doe and your twenty third win, name this television sitcom. Would that be Mork and Mindy? I can tell you this, it's your twenty third win. You got it. Oh <laughs> I, again I was not sure. <laughs> Well, you don't always have to be sure, but you do have to be right. And once again, Jason Myers, you are right to the tune of an additional $2,000 added to your winnings this season. And as we said earlier, that brings you to a grand total, again, of $1,798,400. Don't go too far away. In just a minute, you will go up against Fluffy, but first. Scott, you once again brought a good fight to Jason. Unfortunately, just some of the categories you wound up dipping into was just a little outside of your, your range. Um, if I can give you just a little advice uh, as you continue to grow here uh, with us in MVG, uh, just find those categories you're not quite as strong in and study on them as best you can. That is one of the best things you can do to improve yourself is, is find your weaknesses and strengthen those. So how do you feel after the game? I, I knew what I was going up against in Jason, but I think I faced him during like his 15th win. And now he's on win 23, so I knew he was just going to be better. So I just came in swinging and, hey, I put up a fight. That's all I can say. And hey, that, that at the end of the day is exactly what we want out of contestants here. We really appreciate you being here. Of course, you got two boxes in this game, and those two boxes will give you $250 apiece, giving you another $500 on the season for you. And we put that together with what you won the first time, which I inadvertently earlier said that you had won $500 the first time. You actually did not get a box. I looked at the person above you. So this time you actually did better. So you will finish the season up here with $500 to your name and our thanks. And we look forward to having you back again in season two. Again, if Jason decides to allow us to come back. Did <laughs> <laughs> uh, that 500 come from Tic-Tac-Toe or Jason's total? No, no, no that's, that 500 is coming from Tic-Tac-Turd. So, yeah, enjoy that. Even though Jason wouldn't know if we took it from him. So, <laughs> But with that being said, again, Scott, we appreciate having you here. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got the flat broke kid, Scott Michaels. Well done, sir. And after we take a quick commercial break, we're going to come back, and Jason is going to go see if he can put the smack down on Fluffy again and get himself over the $1.8 million mark right here on Turd's Tic Tac Doe on the MVG Television Network. Come back and see us. All right, Jason Myers, you are back here again. You've got yourself 23 wins now. You are 12 and 10 against Fluffy so far. Do you think you can keep your winning streak going? I hope so at well, this point. <laughs> Fluffy is the only one that seems to have your number, so let's go over here and find out what's going to happen. Uh, 
All right, Jason Myers, you have been over here plenty of times to know what's going to happen. We've got those nine numbered boxes behind them. We've got our dollar amounts. Get yourself a thousand dollars or more with that money, and we will give you fifty thousand dollars if you can do it before you find that dragon. You also notice that we've got the tick and tack flashing up there. If you can find that at any time during the game, we will give you the money as well. But here at Turs Tic Tac Doe, as you know, we like to be extra. So find tick and tack in your very first two choices. We will double it up to one hundred thousand dollars. You've done it before. You have flirted with it quite a few times. Who knows? Maybe you'll do it again. If you understand these rules as they have been read to you, the only thing we can say is, Fluffy, you fly. I'm sure he's tired of hearing that, especially when Jason's name is involved. Hmm. All right, so Jason, go out there and get yourself over $1.8 million. Four. All right, box four. Nails his upside down chair. Let's see if it's good as good to you as it's been to Nails. Seamus, show us. $250. Okay, so the bonus is not in effect in this game. So you're still playing for 50 k If you want to go on, or I'll give you that 250 and you can go on and face your final opponent. I'll go on. All right, he goes on. Where are we going to next? Three. All right, box number three, Fluffy's Comb. I know that he ain't got any hair left, so he ain't combing nothing. But let's find out. Seamus, box three, please. All right, so box three keeps hot ticker tight. <laughs> Keep that in mind as you come up here next time, if you're lucky enough. All right, so Jason, you've got tick. You're 750 way in cash. Do you want to keep going? Or yeah, have you had enough? Going. All right, he's going on. Two. All right, box number two. Let's see. Is it a good one for you, or will Fluffy drop a deuce on you? Seamus, box two, please. All right, there's 400. All right, so you're up to $650. There are two boxes up there now that will give you that 50K. But I will offer you now 650 to walk away. I'll keep going. Of course you will. One. Box number one. He's going for that straight line. I'm going to see if he can knock out another one. Let's find out. Is there 500 or tag behind box one, Seamus? No, but there's 100. All right, so now you're up to three out of these five boxes. We'll give you the win. But Fluffy still lurks. 750 to walk away. I'll keep going. He goes on. Seven. Box number seven. There's that cane that you were talking about. Let's see if you can raise it and beat Fluffy with it. Is he a winner? No, he is not. All right. Are you me? I'm going to do this again. So, $900 is what we've got in the pot. So, you can take 900 and walk away. You have a 75% chance of finally eclipsing $1.8 million. Do you feel lucky, punk? Well, do you? Let's keep going. All right. Don't find Fluffy. Six. Box number six, the Snake Charmer's Box. Let's hope you did not make a mistake and charm a dragon right out of hiding. So it's either 50K or he will tell you to go away. Seamus, which is it? You got it. Oh. Jason freaking Myers once again has put the beat down on Fluffy T Dragon. Apparently, the wind has broken his connection. <laughs> well, yeah, his educational connection, that is for sure. Uh, once again, look at that number up there for you, Jason. Now, in cash and prizes, you have won so far in 23 games with us $1,848,000. $475. This has got to feel like a dream. <laughs> if it is a dream, I don't want to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, a lot of that is in your hands. But before we move on from this, audience, where's Fluffy? Nine. <laughs> Can it move? All right, so I heard a five. I heard a nine. Anybody else want to throw one out? 
Hey, oh, like, the, the like, like the last episode. All right, well, let's find out. Where is he? Oh, he was in nine. Once again, that Tic Tac and Fluffy in a straight row with each other. All right, well, Jason, you've got yourself that over $1.8 million now. We're going to take a commercial break, come back, and you're going to be ready to face your final opponent of this season right here on Turt's Tic Tac Doe. Come back and see us. All right, back here with Jason Myers here on Turt's Tic Tac Doe. Jason, you have almost survived all the way to the end of the season. You've won 23 games. How do you sum up what you've done? I, if I remember correctly, I think somebody a few episodes ago kind of sort of made a bet that I would go all the way to the end of the season. If that's the case, I think they're about to collect. Well, why it has to be at my expense, I don't know. <laughs> well, before we before we get into finding out who your next opponent is, as we've told you through this season, you have taken out 18 unique opponents as we've played. And we would like to remind everybody of who that is now. You started off, you took away Brandon Scruggs' championship in your first victory. Then you went to Davion, Paul, James, Peach, John, Justin, Nels, Jose, Shedrick, Scott, Will, Aaron, Brandon Hinkle, Mark, Braden, Corey, and Adam Oliver. And you took out a few of those people twice. So, with that being said, there is only one more game that you have to win to survive this regular season. Travis Coulter, will you let us know who his final regular season opponent is, please? Our final contestant comes to us as a casino games dealer. He comes to us from Silva, North Carolina. Please welcome the head honcho of MVG, Brandon Strug. So, Jason, you took him out first. And now he comes back to see if he can take you out last. Brandon Scruggs, the head of MVG, he is the proud husband to Sonny. He is the proud owner of this place. He is the godfather of Tic Tac Doe as we know it. Mr. Scruggs, welcome back to the Tic Tac Doe stage. How are you, sir? I am well, thank you for having me back. And again, I'm not the Godfather by any means. I there were there were many that had did, who hosted the show long before I ever thought about doing it. It was just sort of one of those rare gifts that kind of got dropped in my lap, and I just kind of ran with it at that. Well, while that may be true in a sense, you have been the one that has picked it up. You polished it up, and you made it the gem that it is here at MVG today. And I think all of us here can say thank you for doing that. And as I have told you off camera, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to run with this in a syndication format and turn it into my own little um, nugget, we could say, of turds tic-tac-toe. So, yes, thank you very much for that. Um, so, first of all, let's just start off with... Remind everybody, since it's been a long time since they've seen you, tell them a little bit about yourself. Yeah, once again, I'm 38 years old. I live in Silver, North Carolina. I work at a casino as a table games dealer. In my spare time, I enjoy uh, karaoke. I'm a commentator and ring announcer for independent wrestling in the state of Georgia. I have used, I was a former DJ. I have worn a lot of different hats in my short life so far and hopes that I will have a few more to put on my head before it's all said and done. Well, that is fantastic to hear. I know you've got to be very proud of yourself for all the irons that you have in the fire. Now, the even bigger question. Many, many, many episodes ago, 
for that matter, back in, I believe it was episode 14, a well-known but not much heard from in this season contestant by the name of Jason Myers stepped up to the podium as you were on a little winning streak of your own, and he took you down in a very good battle, may I say. We are here yes. t- 24 games later. He has a 23-game winning streak. He holds the all-time record at MVG for longest streak in tic-tac-toe and for what I may know may have the longest winning streak in any game show here. Um, what have you learned since then that makes you believe that you can finally be the one to quote-unquote slay this dragon? <laughs> um... There's, there's no say that I can. I, I know Jason's a very good quizzer. He has a wealth of knowledge that has been on full display here on on your tic, on Tic Tac Turd. But in the, in the overall sake, uh, I said, I know I had a bad game when I lost to him. And I do know that I'm a better trivia player than that. So I said, if the categories come up to things that I might be more familiar with or... Jason ha- takes a misstep. I can take advantage of it. It could happen. So who knows at this point? So do you feel confident enough that you'd be willing to put your 24-7 title up against him? First off, I don't have the 24-7 title anymore, sadly. I oh. want it. But dang it. I'm so sorry to hear that. And second of all, I would absolutely do it. Well, hey, fair enough. This right here, of course, this is Jason going for his 24th win in a row. So in a way that we could say he's going for his 24-7 title here. But Brandon, we definitely welcome you and thank you for coming back. And we wish you the best of luck. Let's get this game underway as we get ready to finish off our season here of Turds Tic-Tac-Doe. So as you know, being the challenger, you get to select our two red categories for the game. So if you would, give me two numbers between 1 and 15. Let's go with four and 13. Four and 13. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. All right. So we are ready to get this thing underway. We, of course, are going to play our game of X's and O's where you're trying to get three X's rows in a row, whether that be horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. You're going to do so by answering trivia questions. And in this round, we will be asking in these categories, and they are... Winter Sports, Number Please, Grammar, The 2000s, Potluck, Famous Families, Movie Directors, Opponent's Choice, and Where Am I? Those two flashing categories there, those are the red ones that Scruggs just chose. We'll talk a little bit more about them if they get chosen during this game. All right, we've made it this far here, Jason. Get you a victory here, and you will be able to take yourself a well-deserved break. So as the champion, you get to select the first category. Good luck. To both of you, and let's go to work. Now, see, while everybody else was hearing the contest and intro music, I was hearing the final boss music in my head. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, goody. Where am I? Yeah, well, where? right now you're at the X podium, but we right. will let you have that category as well. All right, where am I? Over in the lower right-hand side. All right, Jason, I am the movie capital of the world. Where am I? Hollywood, California. You are in Hollywood, California. Well done. Your name is absolutely in lights, and so is $250 in the pot, and we shuffle. All right, Brandon, I know you've watched a lot of his games. You know if he gets a quick start, you've got to do it right along with him to have a chance. So where do you want to go? I will go with the 2000s, please, upper right-hand corner. All right, the 2000s. In the 2000s, Brandon, what famous department store decided to close all of its stores and focus strictly on mail order catalogs in the year 2000. Okay. Is it Sears? No, I'm sorry. It's Montgomery Ward. Dang it. Montgomery Ward. Ah, so sorry. Nothing doing there. We've got $250 in the pot, and we shuffle. All right, Jason. Definitely want to get on top of this one quick and build a lead. Number, please. All right. Number, please, up in the upper right right hand side all right so with number please i'm going to ask a question that has a numerical answer to it 
Okay, so you will get to take a guess first, Jason, since you selected this box. Then mm -hmm. your opponent, Brandon, will get a chance to guess whether he thinks the actual number is higher or lower. Okay, now if you happen to get it on the dot, then you will win the box. Okay. If not, if Brandon correctly guesses whether it's higher or lower, then he will take the box. If he is incorrect, then the box will be yours. Jason, here's your question. So we asked 100 psychiatrists. Okay. So we asked them, generally, does watching soap opera characters solve their problems help a woman to make the same decisions in real life? How many of them said that it did? They're called soap operas for a reason because they just get over dramatic over anything and everything. Uh, as far as the ones that say that it does help, I'll say 35. All right, 35. All right, so Scruggs, we come over to you now. So again, we asked at 100 psychiatrists, generally, does watching soap opera characters solve their problems help a woman to make the same decisions in real life? So Jason said 35. Do you believe that the answer is higher or lower than that? Based on the fact that uh, when a lot of folks still watch in soap operas today, I'm going to say the answer is going to be just slightly higher. All right, you said higher. So once again, we asked 100 psychiatrists, generally, does watching soap opera characters solve their problems help a woman to make the same decisions in real life? The correct answer was 29. So that means Jason gets the box. No play. Bro. All right, $500 is in the pot, and we shuffle. That one was a really, really close guess, and I know that was a hard one to, to fit, kind of work your way through there, Scruggsy, but you still have opportunity here. Where would you like to go? I have to go with grammar for the block, please. All right, grammar in the right center. Gosh, ouch, and hooray are examples of what type of speech? Is it onomatopoeia? No, I'm sorry. It's an interjection. An interjection. Aww. So sorry on that one. All right, $500 in the pot. This game is absolutely not over. I have seen, seen weirder things happen. We shuffle. All right, Jason, we come to you. Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, movie directors. All right, movie directors in the center right-hand side. Jason, get this question correct. In movie directors, you will have a vertical tic-tac-toe. You'll add another $750 to your winnings. So, Jason, I'm going to give you three films, and you are going to give me the name of the person that directed these films. Mm -hmm. Okay, here are your films. Sleeper. Bananas and Manhattan. So for Tic Tac Doe and win number 24, name the director. Uh, is it Woody Allen? I can't believe it. You've got Tic Tac Doe. Oh my God. Well done, sir. I, I literally feel like the the air was just taken out of my lungs that wow you and me both <laughs> i saw that one come up and i'm like it's possible but man that's old and that's going to be rough but as as scruggs told us at the beginning of this game your knowledge of trivia is varied it is wide it is amazing it has i will say it's been an honor to sit back and watch what you have done we will come back and talk to you a little bit more about that here in just a moment. But first, Brandon, I can say that I had definitely hoped at some point late in the regular season to have you go up against Jason again. Uh, when when the opportunity presented itself and myself and, and my producer, Shit Silverstein, were talking, we said this would be a perfect way he... Jason ended Brandon's streak and started his own. 
it would be quite the interesting way to end the season to have them rematch. I would have never expected this. I, I'm going to give you the floor now. What happened? And again, like, like I said, I said there's a multitude of things that I do know, and I I cover a lot of material that a lot of folks in here don't even know. But in Jace's case, he has the other half of that same. I feel like the other half of that same coin, where it spans into topics that happen to fall into his wheelhouse. And again, the the old adage in trivia says it's only easy if you know the answer. This is true. And then, unfortunately, today, I, again, for the first question, I had it down between the two that, two answers, and I chose the wrong one in that case, so that's just bad luck on my part. And then the sec- and the numbers category, like I said, it could have went either way. Cause I was My initial thought was to be lower, but I was like, you know what, let's just play the odds and see if it works out here. It wasn't the case here, so. Unlucky, unfortunate, and just, again, bad timings, what caught me. But, again, Jason's a great player. One want to take any shade from what he's done because he, it's been a fantastic run, and I'm glad we've all got to witness every part of this because he deserves every bit of it, every bit of acknowledgement that's been given to him. Well, I will say, do let me say, it's interesting you said that about, you know, acknowledging how good he is. I guess he is Turd's Tic Tac Doe version of Roman Reigns, and we all need to acknowledge him. <laughs> I, I genuinely feel we do. Jason, I've, I've told you this in seasons past. Like, you're a fantastic trivia player, and I, get, I always love seeing you work your magic. And But I, I love seeing the struggle, but I also love seeing the success that you have. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Well, and Brandon, let me tell you, you are the type of player, as, as I've said to a few people, you're the type of player it is always good to have on the show that whether you come out and you whip somebody, if it's a, if, if you lose or if it's one of those back and forth contests, you are always the ju- just a humble, humble player, and that is something that always means a lot to me, and I really do appreciate that from you. And here's the good news. You were a champion here in this season. You were able to have an eight-game winning streak of your own, which, yeah, in light of what Jason's done, doesn't seem like a lot, but you know yourself. Winning eight games in a row is not easy against a lot of the talent that is here inside of this server. And for your season, in those eight wins, you were able to accumulate 141,000 $600 $600 of your own. Any final words? Hey, great game, Jason. Looking forward to hopefully getting another chance to do it again. All right. Well, ladies <laughs> hear that final boss music. I know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, go get him in the bonus round. <laughs> yeah, so, ladies and gentlemen, a, a great stand-up leader and champion in his own right, Brandon Scruggs. Well done. Big round of applause to him. We are going to take ourselves a commercial break, and when we come back, the 24-time champ himself is going to come back and see if he can make it four in a row against Fluffy right here on Turd's Tic Tac Doe. Back here with Jason Myers. Jason, you did it. You took it all the way from episode 14 when you first met Brandon, and you have made it all the way to the end of the season as a 24-game champion. I'm sure you're feeling good right now. You have winnings right now of $1,849,225. Oh, God. You know, and the thing is, you're going to be kicking yourself later. You're going to be like, man, I should have went for more boxes so that I could have <laughs> hit the 50K here and went over 1.9 million. But I say that, and you'll probably go in here, win the 100K, and make me look like a fool. Don't put that juju on me. <laughs> well, you should want me to put juju on you at this point because the juju has been working in your favor. So for the last time, Jason Myers, are you ready to go face Fluffy? 
Sure. All right, let's do it. All right, here we are back at the beautiful nine-screen board. Jason Myers is looking to once again take down Fluffy, and he did. He will do so by behind these boxes, trying to come up with a thousand dollars or more before he finds Fluffy, and we will give him that 50k. Or he could go the route of finding Tick and Tack, which he has done on a number of occasions, and we'll give him the money as well. Or as he did the first time when he played Brandon, who knows? Is this Deja Two? where he finds Tick and Tack in his first two choices, and he makes it $100,000. There's only one way we can find out, and that is to say, for one last time this season, Fluffy, Jeff Lake. All right, Jason, you've got nine boxes. Go win yourself another 50K. Six. All right, box number six. That is the Snake Charmer's box. Let's hope Fluffy doesn't hear you playing. Seamus, box six, please. $400. All right, we're not going to win the 100 k this time. So would you like to take that 400 and walk away for the first time ever, or do you want to keep playing? I'll keep playing. All right, he goes on. Where to next? One. All right, box number one. Is this the top of his charts? Let's find out. Seamus, one. There's 500. Okay, looking to end this one early. All right, any dollar amount you find here, and you are a winner again. You want to go on, or you want $900 to stop? Is your luck running out? So keep going. All right. Five. All right, box number five. He is tempting fate. Fluffy likes to hang out in box five. That's always where he starts. He greets us on the board. Let's see if you're a winner for 50K. What's behind box five, Seamus? You got it. Look. Jason Myers, what can I say? What can I say that I have not said already 24 different times this season? <laughs> You, you finished this first season with a record against Fluffy of 14 and 10. And in cash and winnings for the regular season, you finished with $1,899,225. How do those numbers sound in your ears? <laughs> It, it's all uh, it's all one big jumbled mess in my head, it's a, but it's a good mess, not the bad kind. Well, and, and here's the crazy thing. Even if we take away that first win that you had where mm -hmm. you won the million dollars, you still almost multiplied the next closest champion's winnings by somewhere in the neighborhood of four and a half. Wow. <laughs> yeah, between the cars and the bonus game wins, the spare. Let's spare. not forget the spare. <laughs> Just, the spare. Yeah, spare. spare. So, we are going to take one more commercial break. We'll come back, and we've got some announcements to make here on Turds Tic Tac Doe. You don't want to miss these. Back here for the final time in this regular season, Jason Myers. Sir, I, I, I don't have a lot else than I can think to say to you other than, of course, as we said a moment ago, you have $1,899,225. You've won 24 games in a row. How does it feel to have made it to this point? My head hurts. <laughs> Well, I think there was uh, several other opponents here that would say their butt hurts at this point <laughs> after what you have done to them. Um, here's the thing. I've not had a lot of chance to ask you this question this season. Have you had fun? Always. 
Well, that is good to hear. As we said to you earlier, Jason, you finish this season having won 24 games in a row. You will come back in season two, assuming that you and uh, the Godfather himself, Brandon Scruggs of MVG, allows us to come back for a second season. <laughs> when you come, ba- when we come back, you will be our defending champion at that point, and you would be going for your 25th win. As we know, when you go for a fifth win in a row, you win a little something special. And this time, we took it to the max. So, Travis Coulter, oh, tell him what he could win. We have the Porsche 718 Boxster. This is a two-seater vehicle that comes in six trim levels. The, the 718 Boxster comes with a 2.5 liter H4 turbo engine with rear wheel drive, heated leather seats, a convertible roof, Apple CarPlay, infotainment system, and is estimated to deliver 19 miles per gallon in the city and 24 on the highway. This car will be worth $63,950. So, Jason, how would it sound to have a Porsche Boxster in your driveway? My neighbors might complain. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they may already complain thinking you're always throwing parties, seeing as how you already have four cars, and you'll have a fifth one if you can win that game. (laughs) We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. We will. And it it may be just a little bit before we get to cross that bridge. But either way, Jason, it's been great having you here this season. Again, I would like to thank everybody out there for the support they have given this entire season. For everyone that has come out and played this game. We look forward to seeing you back here in Season 2. Keep your eyes posted to MVG for more information. This is your host, Herd Ferguson. And you sure as hell aren't. Bye for now. Come on, shit. Don't mess up the last one. You're fired. Third <laughs> Track Doe is a Grandma Studios production in association with MPG Productions. <laughs> Oopsie.